Hey guys, Mike Toy, Bonsai Boise. So look at this beast of a ficus benjamina. I'm gonna bonsai this thing. So I found this on, I think it was Facebook Marketplace. Somebody selling it for 50 bucks. And uh, he said he had it for 20 years and it had grown so big it was blocking his whole window. The person he got it from before him had it for 15 years. So we know it's at least 35 years old. I had this one picture to go on as I was looking at the ad, which I'll post a picture of right here so you can see it. It was really blurry, but I could still kind of tell that there was potential there. It looked to me like it was a kind of a multi-trunk clump style thing, but being as big as it was, I knew it had potential. So it was like 45 minutes away, um, drove out there and got it and brought it home. So here it is now. So what I'm going to do is chop it down a lot, about as much as I can get away with really. Um, and I'll give you an inside look here in a second. I'll zoom in so you can see it, but I'm going to try to get it down somewhere in like maybe this range, something like that. Um, it just depends on what I can get away with. I have no idea what the soil looks like. It's covered in leaves and rocks right now. I haven't dug around. I just picked it up, brought it here, and now I'm doing it. So we're going to look at this together. We're going to see what kind of soil it's in. If it's ever been repotted, who knows? Um, I may repot it today, or I may just hack it back, see how it goes for like a week, and then repot it. So uh, come with me. I'll give you a closer look, and uh, well, let's see what this dirt looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean this out a little bit here before I get started too much. I just wanna get the leaves and sticks and rocks and stuff out of there, at least for now. Kinda half afraid to stick my hand in this little pile of leaves. This tree being as old as it is and this pot is long, I don't know what's in there. Once I get it all cleaned out, Trying to get a better look at that mess of a situation. It's definitely got potential. I'm thinking a couple things. I'm thinking either a multi-trunk bonsai, possibly try to fuse it together into one big trunk, or maybe even separate it out into a bunch of separate bonsais, which is the least likely option for me because I have enough individual ficus benjaminas as it is. But it's got potential. Once it gets to a certain size like this, it blocks light from the interior of the tree. And so all the leaves end up dying. You see all these dead sticks here? There's going to be a lot of that in there. Because all these outer leaves are blocking the light. And that's significant because of the fact that these don't back bud. That means... There's no leaves in there. I can't take it back too far. I can only take it back to where there are leaves. To give you an example, so like, take a branch here. I can't go all the way back to here if there are no other leaves. The farthest I can take it back is to the last leaf. Which means sizing this down might be a multi-phase approach. I may have to do as much as I can now, let it bounce back, get healthy again, hopefully back bud some, and then do it again and take it back further and further and further. So that's where I'm going with that. All right, so time for the fun part now. I'm gonna start making some big cuts. Now one might argue, hey, why not just go in and hedge prune it? Basically, you know the size and shape you wanna get it down to, why not just go in there and just hack away, you know, get it down to the size and then structure it how you want. The reason I'm not doing that is, like I was saying a minute ago about how um, back budding is a bit of an issue. I don't want to end up cutting some big branch off that ends up being the only foliage and then that entire trunk dies. So I'm trying to avoid that. You can kind of tell a little bit of color um, difference as you're looking. You can see the leaves on the outside of the tree are really bright green. And leaves on the inside are kind of more yellowy. Hopefully you can see that. 
a little bit subtle. You, know, you almost have to be looking for it to see it, but, but it's there. And that's just because the leaves on the inside aren't getting as much light. They're not as healthy. They'll get there. Something else to think about too, because it looks brutal. As I'm hacking this thing away, it looks like, oh gosh, the tree's gonna die. It won't. Uh, the thing to remember is that there's kind of a balance between roots and leaves or foliage. So as I'm hacking back at the leaves, the roots are still there. They're still pumping out the same amount of energy. So what will likely happen is that it will back bud pretty ferociously there at first. At least that's the hope. That's how it usually goes. To uh, get in. That's all the carnage there in the bucket. So, to give you a, an even closer look here, let me see if I can zoom in. It's tricky. You know, looking for the lowest foliage point to cut back to is tricky in, the, in a jungle like this. It's hard to know what branch is connected to what. And some of these, like, this is going to be a challenging one, really, because, like, look at this guy here. Long, straight. That's probably, I don't know, 16 or 18 inches tall with no foliage. And then actually another six or eight inches until you get out here. So, and there's lots of these examples. Here's another one. Same, same exact thing. I will do on my own. Trying not to damage the one behind it. There we go. So yeah, I keep finding uh, Little spots like that where just as I'm chipping away and chipping away, I'm already seeing another one behind it now. Behind the one that I just cut, there's another one. So a big trunk coming up and then here's a branch, here's a branch, and behind it a branch. So when I find these situations, what I like to do is I like to get rid of the one that is growing inward and just keep the ones that are growing outward, or at least one of the ones that are growing outward. It's the inward ones that cause all the confusion. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Again, with trying not to damage anything else. And then I'll clean up some of those cut points after the fact. Back to this first one. Got this branch that's growing inward in the middle of everything. But sometimes it's nice to have that little, you know, second branch just in case there's die back or whatever. So kind of like an insurance branch, I guess, I don't, you know, you just got to decide as you go. Uh, let's spin it around here. Start to see it take some form. There's another one down here. As I hack away at it all slowly. And at this one, see for a minute, you gotta be careful because the minute I thought this was attached to it, it's attached to the one behind it. And it looks like it's one of, well, one of two, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But this guy, branch here, branch there, branch here, and branch there, which means I can lose some of it. I just have to decide which lose at the very least I think since we've got this foliage here take it back right there which also helps with the confusion factor or helps alleviate some of the confusion in there 
It's starting to get less confusing, a little. And then as I continue operation cleanup, I just through and look for a little, see if I can find one here. Yeah, like little spots like right there. Stuff like that up. It may seem minor and insignificant, and in a way it kind of is, but when you're trying to make sense of a tree, stuff like that kind of adds up and adds to the overall confusion. So I don't need to make it picture perfect yet, but any little dead nubs I can get rid of in the meantime, all the better. But still pretty awkward looking. Big goopy branches like that. I'll probably have to get rid of that. Which good news is it looks like it's not the only branch that trunk is relying on. So that's good. I'm just going to continue doing that. There's a few of these that I can say for sure. This one here. I mean, that's just one long straight branch. And then there's another one. So two right off the bat that I, I know are going to be troublesome uh, just, and, unless I just wire them all up and bend them, which I guess I'll probably have to do. I won't make those decisions yet. So let me get back to it. I'll give you another update here in a sec. All right. So here we are a little over two weeks later. Holidays came. I caught a cold, you know, life moves forward. Anyways, check that out. I think that's petrified wood. We'll come back to that later. We'll, we'll wash it off and take a better look. But anyways, so here we are a little over two weeks later, and I'm, fi I'm finally getting around to repotting this thing. So I've got, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a cardboard box with kind of a grate thing. It's actually one of the little grates or shelves that I use uh, for my trees when they're outside. I think it's from an old industrial fridge. But anyways, the reason I'm doing it that way is because it's such a massive root ball, it's, I just thought it would be easier than doing it in a tray. So this way I can just sort of let the dirt fall right into the box and then I'll throw away the box. I don't know what I expected to find when I started to uh, get it out of this old soil. I guess I thought it might be really root bound um, I, I just, you never know, but it, there were a lot of roots, which is a good thing. If it had barely any, I would have been skeptical that it wasn't in that pot that long or worried that it wasn't very healthy. But it had a good amount of roots. What really surprised me though, is just how loose the soil was. I mean, it's not, it, maybe at one point it was potting soil certainly not looking that way anymore it just looks like dirt just like some random old dirt like if you went to a vacant lot somewhere and dug up some dirt that's what it seemed like to me it didn't have any kind of it didn't smell some trees when you repot them they actually have a smell almost like it's rotting or something didn't have that um i will say the people that i got it from were smokers uh, and they smoked inside, so it really smelled like smoke. Sure, it's not healthy for the tree either, maybe. I don't know. Is smoking bad for trees? Now that I think about it, I say it out loud, I'm not so sure. I don't know. But the dirt certainly smelled like smoke. And so it had been stinking up my office for like two weeks now. So I was happy to get this done. But I digress. I'm just going through with a chopstick and poking away at it and sort of messing with it with my hands, just trying to get it all out without damaging things. Get rid of that bottom part of the root so that the root, the dirt can just fall out easier. That um, I'm finding little pieces of that metal rod. It seems like the bottom part must have rusted and broken off a few times. So here's the, a look at the root ball. 
not bad. We've got some, some good material to work with here. Still pretty hard to see what's happening in there. So I'm going to have to wash the, the dirt out at some point. I'm just going to get a bucket and just sort of dunk it into the water a few times. If it weren't winter, I would just take it out and hose it down. But it is. So give it a few good dunks. We'll let that marinate for a minute. Let's look at the pot and figure out what kind of pot to put it in. I wanted to give it a lot of room for the roots to grow because I, I feel like it, if it has been in that other pot and that other soil for 30 years, I want to give it a chance to really take off and grow vigorously. So I chose this big old pot here, which until now i had been thinking is a really ugly pot. Here's the soil, by the way, that's just perlite, safety absorb, pine bark, and very small particles of black volcanic rock. Yeah, this pot was kind of ugly, I think. I'm not too proud to say so. But in this particular case, it ended up being a perfect fit. All right, let's take another look at these roots. There actually was more roots than I had first thought. There's quite a bit of roots there. I'm still a tiny bit skeptical that this tree really is 35 years old, but I suppose it's possible. I mean, I've got some trees that are seven years old, some ficus benjamina that are about the same thickness, but they've been growing in bonsai soil, whereas this one has been growing in vacant lot dirt. So that could be a two, who knows? My overall goal or slash plan here is I, I don't want to cut more roots than I have to. I know I'm going to have to cut some, but I, I don't want to really put it under more stress than it has to be. I'm just sort of poking at it, just kind of seeing what's what there. Ficus benjaminas are notorious for growing these giant potato roots so i know there's some in there at first i don't see any which is good then i start to poke around i start to see more which i'll give you a better look at here in a second i sort of lose track of what i'm doing realize i'm not getting any of this in the camera so i switch positions here in a minute right about now i think is when i realize oh hey so there you can start to see once you get in there there are some big thick potato roots so typically you want to get rid of those. It's better to have a, what I would call a mess of fine roots rather than big, thick roots. Big, thick roots take up a lot of room. I've also noticed that they can sort of contribute to, I don't know, uneven growth. So you know, one branch grows really abnormally fast and thick and the other one doesn't, et cetera, that kind of thing. So as I'm going through this, I still don't have a solid plan of what I'm going to do, but I'm starting to form one. And what I'm starting to think is I'm just going to do kind of a clump style for now. And I'm going to try to expose some of these roots so that it, it looks like kind of a, just a jungle, just a little bit of a jungle. There's a big old potato right there. Look at that. So I'm just cutting it down enough to where it will fit inside the pot while exposing maybe the top few inches of roots. So here's a look at where we're at. I want to take it down to about there so that that would be the soil line right around there. So it's going to be exposing more trunk line than was exposed before and some roots. There's a chance that the roots won't like it and they'll die. I think there's enough roots underneath still that the plant itself will live, but the exposed roots might not. And that's okay. I can live with that. There's one root there on the right side. You can see it. That's sort of bugging me. And I, 
was indecisive about keeping it or not. I'm still indecisive. Uh, the more I look at it, the more I think I might just get rid of it. For now, I left it. But uh, it's just a little higher than the rest. Kind of pokes out more than the rest. It's just a little bit of a oddball root. It sticks out like a sore thumb. But if I can forget about that root for a second and focus on the rest of it, I'll say that I think it's it's starting to look okay. I mean, if you if I'm looking at it with the eyes of long-term plan, long-term strategy. As far as filling it with soil here, if you've ever watched any bonsai video on doing this or any of mine, you'll know that you have to work that soil into the roots because you don't want air pockets in there. Uh, you want to make sure that you, you just get it in there all the way. This one was particularly challenging to do it. So I'm doing kind of a slow and steady approach just because it's such a crazy root system down there. Making sure that there's no air pockets was a tedious process. It probably took me, I don't know if I, no exaggeration. It probably took me an hour or so of this right here, which one hour may not sound like much until you find yourself poking soil in between roots with a chopstick. Then one full hour is a long time. I won't bore you with all of the details in doing it, but I'll bore you with some of them. So I'm just kind of working it in. Pouring it in, working it in, pouring more in. I had an entire bucket worth of soil. I mean, I had that thing filled to the rim. And yet somehow, some way, I still ended up having to go and fill the bucket up again. It took like one and a half buckets to fill up that pot. I wouldn't have guessed that pot could hold that much soil even without the tree in it. But somehow it just does. It's like, it always astounds me how that works. This is always the longest, tedious part, most tedious part of the process. Anyways, back to long-term plan. So it is going to be a multi-phase approach. There are some long trunks that I just can't do anything with at the moment. I can wire them up, which I probably will, but I can't yet just because I want to let it get healthy again. So a quick look here. I'm just cutting off some of the wild, hairy looking roots that are growing up and out. And I can't seem to tame and keep under the soil. You can get a good look there on the left here. You can see some sticking out. I'm just gonna go through and get rid of some of those. Try to work some of these roots into a little bit better position if I can but I'm not expecting it to look pristine yet. I want it to look good. I want it to have some character so that you can look at it and kind of know that, okay, I see, I sort of see where it's going, but I don't expect it to look perfect yet. So multi-trunk clump style for now, but I may end up doing some kind of fusion. I may end up just Trying to fuse all the trunks together. That would look cool too. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna water it here. And as I'm watering it, I'm really sort of focusing on, you can see the bottom part of the trunks where I exposed it, where it was covered in soil before. You can kind of see, I must've I must have exposed at least an inch or two of trunk, I'm trying to spray those down. So here it is. This is the, what I'll call finished for now, look. It's not finished long-term, but it's finished for now. It's still way too tall. There's a clump of four or five trunks there that I just can't do anything with yet because all the foliage is at top. Once it gets more established in the pot, I'll figure out what to do. If I want to wire them into some kind of cool shape or if I, hopefully they'll back bud and maybe I can lose the top half, we'll see. But this is it for now. So Bush to Bonsai 2.0 here, um, I think it's, it's going in the right direction. So I appreciate everybody who's watching. Please like and subscribe. You can see updates on this when I do an update. Have a good rest of your day, everybody.